Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel! If you're new here, my name is Medita, and if you didn't guess what we're doing today based on the title of this video, then I'm gonna tell you. I'm going to be giving you all a book shelf tour today. I've been getting lots of DMs about it, and I've been putting off making this video, but today I decided to say, you know what? Get yourself together, Medita! We have to film this video. We have to give the people what they want. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna be showing you some of my favorites on each row on each shelf and just like, explain a little bit why the things are together and point out some very cool things that I have like this mind you I'm a bit of a hoarder and I don't really do anything else except reading so be aware of that I also have some books double but don't be confused by that it's on purpose nothing on my shelf is by mistake so let's just get started I'm gonna be starting off with my fantasy shelf because I do indeed love this shelf. This side has more of a fantasy theme and this side is more of a dystopian slash fantasy mystery darker theme, if that makes any sense. Let's just start off with the top right away, which is my 2012 Hunger Games Tumblr dystopian era shelf. As the title already says, the Hunger Games are on here, as well as Divergent, The Selection, basically all the dystopian books that I read back in 2012 to 2014. Some of them I love, like The Darkest Minds, The Fifth Wave, and The Hunger Games. Some of them I don't like, like The Selection and Divergent, but that's just me. And I wanted to keep them because I had to keep them for the vibe and the memories of what I went through when I went through this phase, AKA being in love with Joss Hutcherson. And on the other side, we then have the books that I would say were caused by the Twilight virus. Yeah, as the title says, Twilight is on here, but then also the Vampire Academy and Angel Fall, which is with angels, obviously, but I think that that came also because of Twilight. Maybe my brain is just putting two and two together and it's and it's wrong, but I put the, the angels next to the vampires just because in my head the vibe fits, okay? It does. So we have Hush Hush on here and the one angel series I love, which is The Daughter of Smoke and Bone. Uh, Amy Taylor has an amazing writing style. I'm also halfway through Stranger Dreamer and the writing yet again is so good. We have a focus on books and dreams and languages. If there's one book on the shelf that you should read, it's Stranger the Dreamer. These are also books that I read a while ago and these are my nostalgic shelves. Now we go one row below and we enter what I would like to call the book talk fantasy shrine. Not all of these are from book talk. Some of them are on here because I didn't have any more space, but most of them were books that I have seen a lot on book talk, AKA Shadow and Bone Trilogy, Cinder, Heartless, and Ember in the Ashes. If there's one book from the shelf that I recommend to you, it is An Ember in the Ashes. It's amazing. I have actually not finished that quartet. I don't know why I have never had time or maybe I've just have forgotten about it, but I love the first book. So maybe I actually should finish that. That's kind of embarrassing. We will finish it one day. And if there's one book on here that I'm telling you not to read because I'm not reading it, then I will say that's Coquette Kingdom because I'm terrified of the pain that that book will cause me. I am refusing to finish the Six of Crows duology because of the spoilers I saw. No. And on the other side, we have the dystopian books that I would consider were also on book talk quite a lot and Mara Dyer because that isn't dystopian, but yet again, I have no space for that. So we have Red Queen on there, didn't really like it. We have Legendborn, absolutely love it. I know it's also considered fantasy really, but to me, Legendborn gives me a dystopian vibe. So that's why it's on here. And then we have Scythe, which is one of my favorite dystopian series ever. It really got my brain tingly and I was thinking a lot. I just recently got Gleanings for Christmas. These are short stories in the same universe. I'm very excited to read this. And I know it's a hardback and that the size looks funny. Please ignore. This will happen a lot more and will get even more annoying. That's it, that's my dystopian shelf. And then we go back one more row down. And this is one of my most important rows because this is like on my eye level, right? So guess what has to be on my eye level? My Shatter Me Shrine. I have an entire video focus on my Shatter Me books because um, there's just so much I could talk about. I could talk about the series for hours, for days, for weeks. I love this series. Aaron Warner is literally my husband. So let me just give a little bit of an overview of what we have on here. We have these German special editions of the first three books in the Shadow Me series, and then we have all my paper bags. They're also all not the same size, and you can see the cracked spines. If you don't like cracked spines, look away now. I love cracked spines, so. And then we have all the hardbacks for the series because four of these are special, AKA um, I had this to prove that I love Shadow Me because I needed the original cover. I need every cover of the Shadow Me series that exists. I know it's ugly, but I still have to have it. It's not a choice, it's a law. And then Restore Me to Find Me and Imagine Me are all Barnes and Noble's exclusive editions that are signed and have special extra scenes. And that's why I own them because I love that stuff. And now we obviously have the Fairy Loot 
Shatter Me special editions. Usually all my special editions are up top, but because I have a Shatter Me shrine, they had to go there. It was necessary, I had to do it. Let me show you though the cover. Cause that looks so good. <gasps> I know that's Adam, but whatever. But like, look at this, that's Aaron and he looks so good, I absolutely love it. But yeah, that is my Shatter Me shrine. My one true love, my everything. If my house burns down, these are the books I will be saving indeed. And on the other side of the shelf, we have fantasy books. And the vibe of this shelf is fantasy books I love, but also books that I'm scared to read. So we have on here one of my favorite fantasy duets, The Wrath and the Dawn, absolutely love it. Enemies to Lovers, it's amazing. We have A Course of Dark and Lonely. I love Bridget Kemmerer. I will buy anything Bridget Kemmerer publishes. Yes, okay, I support her. And then we have, as I said, fantasy books I'm scared of. I do not want to read them, but I have to because I own them. And also I've challenged myself this year to read 10 books with over 700 pages. So these have to be read because these are my Thicky Mickey books. And Thicky Mickey books scare me a lot. I don't know. I don't think I have the concentration for those books, but we're gonna try. And then we just have a lot more fantasy duets and other fantasy books. These are row three and four on my fantasy shelf. So let me just show you what we have on here because it's a bit messy, but I think it will make sense after I explain it. On this side, we have my VE Schwab slash fantasy with a mystery plotline vibe shelf. If that makes any sense, except for Cry's Word. That's just on here because I love that duet so much and you have to read it because it's amazing. I absolutely love V. Schwab. I fell in love with her when I read The Invisible Life Added with Rue. She has a very magical and artsy writing style, I would like to say. And then we also have books on here like Stalking Jack the Ripper. I don't know why I bought all four books because after reading the first one, I realized I do not like this series. And now I just have them. I might finish them still because it could get better. And then, ow, my knees. And then on the other side, we have more fantasy books, but this is now already really random because we have high fantasy, like the Poppy War, but then we also have YA, like the, an enchantment of ravens, and then we just have amazing books like this Woven Kingdom and Caraval. Ignore how my Caraval books look. I know that they're all different sizes and different spines, and I hate it too, but this is the reason my shelf is quirky and different unlike other girls because all my books are different looking. So it's part of my shelf's personality. So we cannot get new versions of the Caraval series, even though I love that series so much and I'm telling you to read it. Starting from here, it's getting even uglier and more messy on my shelf. We were losing the vibe down here, but it's okay because on this side, we at least still have a little bit of a vibe and that is the orange red slash black covers. And I love it. I think it all fits together except for like Foul Lady Fortune and Kingdom of the Cursed. They're just here because Chloe Gong is on here and because Kingdom of the Wicked is on here. We also have on here Cemetery Boys, which is one of my 13 five star reads of this year. I absolutely love it. I recommend it to anybody. It was an amazing story. I got so emotional. Great culture in here. Great sarcastic characters as well and great found family. Read this. And then we have on here Children of Blood and Bone, Iron Widow, Firekeeper's Daughter. And on the other side, it's starting to get messy because here we have a lot of my dystopian books that I read in my 2012 Hunger Games era, but they all didn't fit up there, so they had to be down here. You know, I just didn't have enough space. Like, I'm sorry. And then we just have more fantasy books, but also a focus on mermaids because we have Poseidon here, but also Skin of the Sea, which is an amazing duet with mermaids and kind of an aerial retelling and gods and great culture aspects and legends and sad scenes. This is just a great book, so you should definitely read it. And then we also have Robber Girl on here, which is a fairy tale type story <laughs> because it is about the Snow Queen. So it doesn't really fit on the shelf, but yeah, I didn't have any more space. So this is where it's gonna go. If there's one book on here that I recommend to you all, then it is All That's Left in the World. I just read this yesterday. This is a dystopian book that plays after the coronavirus when another virus breaks out and like almost everyone gets killed and a few people are surviving. And this is about some of the survivors and it's a really good story in my opinion. It's a standalone, it was very nice. I loved it. Now let's go to the bottom rows, which are now gonna be even more messy. So trigger warning. So starting on my left side, we have this fantasy slash dystopian shelf where we still have a bit of space left, as you can tell. And we have just random fantasy books on here, like Light Lark, The Winner's Curse, which is actually a dystopian book that I really liked. We have Cinderella is Dead, The Princess Will Save You, which 
is the longest title ever and the book was okay, I would like to say. I wanna show you this one book that I have here, which is Nemesis, which I thrifted. The cover of The Cruel Prince was printed on here. I don't know why, but it was, and it was also the German one because it says Elfenkrone, which is just so funny to me. And on the other side of the two rows, we have more fantasy and also a lot of my adult fantasy books, AKA books with those scenes, like spicy scenes. For example, A Touch of Darkness, Deal of the Elf King, Fortuna Sorn. But then we also have some YA fantasy books in here that I just didn't fit on my shelf. And then on the last row of my fantasy shelf, we have really random books. For example, we have the Cassandra Clare books. So I wanted to read the Clockwork Angel trilogy, but then for some reason, I thought I had to read all the other six books before that too, to read that trilogy. So I just decided to thrift them all. So now I have a lot of Cassandra Clare books on my shelf that I've never read, but it's okay. I got them all for like $10, so it was a steal. And then we just have other fantasy and dystopian books. We have the Match Trilogy, which I also read in my 2014 era. And then we also have Delirium down there. And that series made me feel absolutely dumb, but I kept it for the memories. And because I just think the covers that I have are so funny because I have the normal cover of Delirium, but then I have this cover. What is that even? I don't understand. I don't want to know what this is. It's so ugly. And on the other side, woo, we have spicy fantasy books. These are all spicy. I don't think there's one book on here that isn't spicy. We have um, Hooked and Scarred. And I was scarred from reading those books. I don't know how I feel about these. Oh, I have to, I have to unhaul some of these actually. I just filmed an unhauling video and because I never looked down there, I never noticed. But there's literally books on here that I want to unhaul. A Land of Never and Night that has to leave my shelf. That's my last fantasy shelf. And then now we focus on this shelf, which is thrillers and dark academia and horror books. I love it. Let me show you. And so this is the barrier between fantasy and romance. So I thought, what could I put in the barrier? And then I thought, ding, 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 dark academia and thriller. So that's exactly what I did. Starting up top, we have lots of YA thrillers and mystery books. We have one of us is lying on here, missing dead girls. And then one shelf below, we have a lot of other thrillers. The Perfect Girlfriend, very good. Down World, The Summer I Drowned. I used to be more of a thriller fan when I was still reading in German a lot. And now I'm trying to get back into it. And then one row below, we have more YA books, which is really random because I don't really know why these are adult and then YA, but it's okay. And this is my, I love all these books, Shrine and then books by the author because I know I will like these books, Shrine. So we have the Inheritance Games trilogy on here. I absolutely love it. I know it's not a thriller, but it's a mystery book. And I think it fit on here very well. And we have A Good Person to Murder, obviously, which is a thriller series, and I loved it as well. And because I love both of these series, I thought I should put it all onto one shelf. I love it here. I love this shelf. I love looking at it. That's why it's on my eye level. Let's go below now. And now we have these four shelves. I don't really know how I would explain these to you because it's very confusing in my head. Especially the last one down here, ignore this one. As you might have noticed, the last row on my shelf is usually very messy and confusing. But these two aren't. These are thrillers. And we have some of my favorite thrillers on here that I've ever read. For example, Confessions by Kane Minato, but also The Chestnut Man. Gory, dark, amazing, loved it. You have to read them, they're amazing. But they're really dark and these are all adult thrillers, right? One row below, we have my Olivia Blake shrine because I love her books. My favorite books by her are definitely the fairy tale retellings. I just overall love fairy tales, so any fairy tale retelling is a plus for me. Yeah, you know, I have all her other books because I will support Olivia Blake all the way. So they deserve a beautiful place on my shelf. And next to it, we have a few dark academia slash books that have a lot to do with libraries and books. Books. I tried to put them somewhere because it didn't fit anywhere else because my Dark Academia shelf is full. On here we have the basics, the classics, all the books that you think of when you think of Dark Academia, aka The Secret History, Vita Nostra, If You Were Villains, Ninth House, The Binding, The Historian. There's one book on here you should read, it's The Binding. And now on my last shelf down here, we have a mix of different books that didn't fit anywhere else. Um, this is just on here because I'm annotating this for my friend and I don't know where to put it yet, so it's just standing here. But these are all gothic mystery books. 
with a thriller plot line and horror books. That's literally what this is. We have Horrid on here, which is absolutely amazing. This is a, this book is Horrid, just like the title. It's confusing, it's dark, it's amazing. I absolutely loved it. We have the Grimrose Girls on here, which is a book at a private school. Students are being killed and everything is kind of confusing and everything's a mystery, so this is really good. And then we also have The Death of Jane Lawrence, which is a ghost story with mystery plot line. That, that's the shelf. I hope that makes any sense at all. And now let's go to my romance. So up here we have romance books that um, take place during Christmas, Halloween, and then just more romance books that didn't fit anywhere else. And then we also just have Paige Toon books because I love Paige Toon and I have a lot of her books. If there's one book on here that I can recommend to you, it is ooh, This Time Next Year, which is a New Year's Eve story actually. And on this side we have a lot of books that are The Simple Wild because it's one of my favorite books. The daddy issues in this book are immaculate and I relate to those daddy issues so I love these books. And as you can tell I have three copies of The Simple Wild. It's a lot, I know, but I'm okay with it. So then we also just have all the other books by Katie Tucker that I have. And we have my Renee Carlino shrine. And if there's one book on here that you should read, it's The Last Post. It was very cute but also very sad. And then we have more sad books over here like stay with me and come back to me which they're so sad trigger warning for all these books they're, they're literally so depressing i don't know how i made it through this series i really don't because i was crying that hard here we then have more of my rom-com romance books with very colorful spines so this is my colorful shelf my happy shelf i would like to say up here we have some of my favorite rom-com romance books with very good characters and plot lines. For example, the Brown Sister Trilogy, The Kiss Quotient, Float Plan, which I absolutely love, and books by Holly Bourne. I like them together. They look nice next to each other and that's why they're all on the shelf. And it's very pretty and I like it and I like looking at it, so that's why. The only book out of place here is Midnight in the Snow. That should be up here. Actually, let's do that now because I don't really know why that is down here. That is so embarrassing. Oh, I did it. I'm so tall. And then on the other side of the shelf, we have more rom-com romance books with very funny plots, in my opinion. We have on here The Right Swipe, Lisa on Love, which I read this year. It was okay. The main character just said a lot of really weird things. And then one row below, we have my Christina Lauren shrine and my Mahiri McFarlane shrine. Cool, right? If there's one book by Christina Lauren that I can recommend to you, it is Rumi's. Um, also, funny story, I have love in other words in French. It was a mistake, I just wanted the old cover and then it arrived in French, it's okay. It's just a bit sad because it's so tiny. And then over here we have Beth O'Leary and Mahirley McFarlane. I love The Switch by Beth O'Leary and I absolutely love Don't You Forget About Me and If I Never Met You by Mahirley McFarlane. And on the other side, we have even more rom-com books. The Trouble With Hating You is amazing. Written in the Stars is amazing. Well Met is literally so amazing. It's, it's, it's mind-blowing. And yet again, the size of some of these books are very funny, but it's okay. Oh, and we also have my Peach Toon books. I was going through a phase, okay? Ignore, ignore it. Now we have reached the area of my romance shelf where it divides between YA and new adult. So on this side, we have all my YA books. Starting off with this shelf, we have my favorite YA books and YA books that I always recommend to everybody. For example, the Heart Supper series, Call It What You Want, so good. The Hot Honey, She's Got to Fake Dating, The Henna Wars, Blackout, Colorblind, When You Were Everything, my literally all-time favorite book, My Life Next Door, Every Last Word. Like, this is an amazing shelf. I love the shelf. Like, we even have In 27 Days on here, okay? This is a highlight on my shelf. And then on the other side, we have Britney C. Sherry, as well as Emma Scott, and more romance books. There's a lot of books on here I would recommend to you, so let me just get started. Along for the Ride, Make a Scene by Mimi Grace. Eastern Lights for Brittany C. Sherry. The Silent Waters for Brittany C. Sherry. Forever Right Now by Emma Scott. I love this shelf. I'm also gonna show you really quickly some of these covers because they're just so pretty in my opinion. Sweet Hand, oh, like, yes. And then down here we have more new adult romance books. We have my Lauren Asher Shrine. I'm so excited for the final offer. Yeah, we have the Twisted series here. I didn't really like it that much, but I'm keeping it anyways. And then we have, oh, we have The Infinity Between Us, which was an amazing book. I cried so much while reading this. I was so sad. I was not doing well. And like, I predicted what would happen, but I was still bawling my eyes out. And then we obviously have on here, the Game On series. It's the one football culture that I really love. 
and then we also have the grip trilogy by kendy ryan which i also really love i'm also still waiting for harper dallas to release the third book in her wild series which is like a snowboarding skiing series and also i reread the friend zone today i cannot show the cover because it's the shirtless man but i love that book okay it's great and on the other side of this row, we have more YA books. I think I might actually have to move these up there because Rachel Lippincott and Daughtry Lippincott are some of my favorite authors. They write such amazing stories. The Lucky List, so good, so emotional. We have Expedua of Lee Cry, which is also really freaking good. When Diplomat Rishi on here, we also have on here Only a Breath Apart, as well as The Bookworm Crush. And we also have Sweet Cute on here. I love YA. They're very comforting to read. They're fun. I like it. Now let's go two rows below. Welcome to my last two rows on the romance side of my shelf. As you can tell, I have a Chris Becker Richie Shrine. I read the Addicted series in 2021, I'm pretty sure. I was able to go to Paris with Vanessa and we got all these signed with character notes. And that's why they have a shrine because they're just Oh my god, they're so nice. And also, this series is still a comfort place for me, especially Bad Reputation, which is about Willow and Garrison. I like that duet a lot. So let me just show you some of my favorites. We have Addicted After All, and we got character notes in here from Lily and Lauren Hale. Obviously, we have Medita, Look, Lo, and I Did It. We created a little superhero, Holds Up Moffy, and we have Medita, Yeah, We Did That, Love, Hugs, Lily. We just have cute quotes from the characters, and they're all in different fonts, and it's very nice just to look at. These books include very happy memories for me for when I went to Paris with Vanessa. Try to be your best self, even if it will never be better than me by Connor Cobalt or Medita. You can ignore Connor's insulting note. Your best self is everything and more. I just, you know, it's just very nice to look at. And on the other side, we have more YA books. Shocker, I know. And in the French Kiss, which is the reason I really got into romance in the first place because that was one of my first romance books ever. And then I switched from thriller to romance really quickly. And we have on here Entwine, which is a published Wattpad book that I really love, as well as Holding Up the Universe, Emergency Contact. Below it, we have a lot of my Wattpad books that are published, as well as just more romance in YA. We have Everything Everything, Instructions for Dancing, Lab Partners, and yeah, Wattpad books like Cupid's Match. I also have an entire YouTube video up where I show all my Wattpad books I have because there's quite a lot because I am a Wattpad girly in my heart. And then the last row is this one down here, which also has lots of Wattpad and the only Mafia series I like, aka the Dark Bar series by Runix. Yeah, this is a collection of different books. My favorite published Wattpad book, which is Becoming Selfish and Staying Shellfish. I don't want to show the cover of the first one because it's not the discreet one. There's a man on there who is shirtless, but this one's very pretty. And yeah, that's my last row on my main shelf. I still want to show you really quickly what we have on the bottom corner here. So these are all German books, so they don't belong in my room. They're going to my parents' place. I work with a lot of German publishers, especially this one called One Publishing, and they send me a lot of their books. And yeah, I need to bring them all always over to my parents' place because I have all my German books over there. I often bring these over here because I do still read German quite a lot, actually, and I'm trying to read 30 German books this year. And then I always bring them over here, obviously, but then I always forget to bring them over again. Now, Vanessa's helping me show you all my special editions because I have to get on the chair for that. And I'm gonna turn it around so you don't see my naked feet. So, these are my special editions. So we have Throne of Achilles, Sears, we have Shadow and Bone, aka Lee Bardugo, lots of special editions here from Fairy Loot, Once Upon a Broken Heart, Babel, The Atlas Six Paradox, City of Dusk, and then we have even more fantasy special editions like Cinder, Unravel the Dusk, The Winner's Curse, that one book I talked about before, which is really good. Fell Lady Fortune, and it's blue, and it looks so pretty, because the original one is pink, but that's such a pretty color, in my opinion. Then we also have the Legend set, which is just gorgeous looking. Now I gotta move over there. Okay, we have the Scythe Trilogy, iconic series that I already talked about. But then we have more subscription books. We have Daughter of the Pirate King, and then we have the special editions for the Inheritance Game Trilogy, and they look so nice. I love them. They're so pretty. I'm so in love with these. I'm so happy I have these. After this, we have romance, like Anna and the French Kiss, The Kingmaker. Those are all my, my special editions. Cool, now let's go to the side shelf. Ta-da! Um, this is a shelf where also Lego is on. Because why not, you know? I have two obsessions in my life, that's Lego and books, so both get to have a place in my life. 
Up top, we have more small Lego sets, but we have small books. Most of these are historical romance or very, very, very old romance books. All of these are thrifted because, you know, I could find them off really cheap online. My favorite books up here are by Lisa Claypass. I absolutely love Mirrored by Morning. And we have Julia Quinn on there. These are all out of order though, because I never am able to reach up there. So I just throw the book on top if there's a new one. Then here we have all of my classics and Greek mythology. So up here we have my Woodsworth classics. There are some really nice books in here and then some Penguin classics and these really pretty special editions by Literature Crate of Pride and Prejudice and Wuthering Heights. Wuthering Heights is my favorite classic. I have like five copies of that book. Actually, we can have one, two, three, four. <laughs> There's book five. That's the one classic I'm telling you all to read. And then, you know, we just have the basic classics on here. Jane Austen, Charles Dickens, Frankenstein, The Three Musketeers. And then one below, we have my Penguin classic collection because I don't really have a lot of these. But we have Sense and Sensibility on here as well as The Beautiful, The One, The One and Only, The Picture of Doreen Gray. And then below, we have all of my German classics and French classics. And a lot of that is Reclame for school. These are not classics. These are just here because I love Coraline and I love Pooh. So we have fairy tales, German classics like Die Schachnovelle, Faust, Emilia Galotti. And then we have Greek mythology books, aka The Song of Achilles, for example, Paranesi, Ariadne, Electra. Oh, if there's one classic on here I would recommend to you, and it is Die Schachnovelle. I actually really like that book. Now here we have lots of my itty bitty teeny weeny books. They're really thin books. These are just general fiction and just books that I don't think fit any of my shelves on my main shelf. So that's why they're on the side shelf. Up here we have lots of very thin books. I just read Modern Times yesterday and I think that this is a book I'm not smart enough for. I did not understand The Body Artist. The only book on here I understood was My Dark Vanessa because I was traumatized by it. What was Modern Times even about? I do not understand to this day. Same with The Body Artist. I am just confused. And then below, we have a collection of sad books. We have We Are Okay on here, one of my favorite books ever. I love Mila Lacour. I love this book. I love the writing in here. It's emotional. It's about friends. It's about sexuality. It is great. And then we also have The Way I Used to Be on here, The First Time She Drowned, Letters to the Lost. I still have my roses on here from when I went to Greece and I pressed my flowers. Like, this is my flower pressing book. And we have A Little Life here, which I still haven't read and will also, yet again, never read. And then at the bottom, we have random books. Um, Laurie Hall's Anderson books, which are very emotional and very triggering. Definitely check your trigger warnings before reading Speak, Twisted Shout, and Winter Girls. Like, these books are very intense. Same with Catalyst. Then we have, I would say, women's fiction books like The Shelf. And then we have a lot of books that are made into movies like Shopaholic, The Devil Wears Prada. Let's go to my bed. This is my bed. We're gonna start off on this side and then work our way to the other side. This is a little overview of the left side of my bed. I can't really put my camera back there because you won't be able to see, but this is all double road. Okay, I'm gonna sit down on a pillow because the floor is cold. We have a lot of romance just down here. These are most of the books that I read, which I don't think I will ever reread again, but I also don't wanna get rid of them because they're not bad bad, they're just okay. So on here we have books like Indigo Ridge and Juniper Hill. They're down here because the books by Willa Nash were down here. And if you didn't know, Daphne Perry and Willa Nash are the same person. But I don't like her books as Willa Nash. And then we have Tajan down here. I thought Enemies was pretty okay, actually. Yeah, in this show we have my Maya Hughes book with QB Tyler. We have Michaela Schmelzer and more actually Wattpad books. I have a lot. Like I have Aiden down here, which is a Wattpad book, actually. It's a Wattpad Mafia book. A lot of these books back there were also sent to me. And even if I didn't like them, I don't know, they hold a memory. I don't know, I was really proud to get these. So even if I didn't like them, I want to keep them. And it's double road because of that. If you do like college football books, I think you should read the Maya Hughes books. The Art of Falling is a trilogy. And yeah, let's go to the front now. This is the front of my bed. This part of my bed is also double road. The back row of this shelf is full of my Sophie Lark books as well as my Zodiac Academy books, which I haven't read. And then in front of it, we have a lot of my really, really old YA books that I read. For example, Casey West. I used to love her so much. The rules books looking for Alaska, right? 
If you're getting into YA romance, I think you should read Casey West because they're very easy to read in my opinion. The fill-in boyfriend also made me cry. The books definitely are not bad, but are they the best piece of literature on this planet? No. If English isn't your first language, I think that the Casey West books would be really easy for you to read because they're very easy English. And then this side is very messy. We have a lot of Wattpad books back there as well as like old romance books that I didn't like as much as these but I'm keeping them for the memory. Like Perfect Chemistry, the Bad Boys Girl trilogy, which is actually originally a Wattpad book. And then in the front row, we have a lot of my tiny books that are romance. We have Emily Griffin, AKA Something Blue, AKA an iconic book. The Proposal down there, amazing book, loved it. The Wedding Date, great. We have Crazy Rich Asians, amazing, okay? I absolutely love this book. And then we have just more romance books that didn't fit on my shelf. I also have Ella Mace here, which is the most random ever. The book I would recommend for you to read on this shelf is The Proposal by Jasmine Guliori. It's a romance book with a focus on family and culture, and it's very good. Now let's go to the other side of my bed. This is the right side of my bed, and also one of the messiest sides, especially the shelf up front. Please ignore it. I don't even want to explain what's on here because it's just the most random books ever. We have the Brandon Sanderson series that I can't even freaking read because my brother sold the first book from me. And I want to read it so badly because it's supposed to be so good and I can't read it. And then we have Percy Jackson right next to it, which also doesn't fit. But I love Percy Jackson. This is a really random messy shelf and all the books are stuffed in here. This is my rest shelf, okay? I don't know what to do with this, okay? Next to it, we have my... I thought I would like dark romance shelf because a lot of these books are dark romance and I am too scared to read them. I still have to read a lot of these because yeah, you know, I'm just really scared. For example, these three mafia books up here, Ace and Luca, About Hate and Dangerous Temptation. I have not read, but I'm gonna read all of these in a reading vlog because I feel like I should read these mafia books. And then we have My Darling Arrow here, which is one of Vanessa's favorite books, so I have to read it. Tilly Call Sweet Fall, which is a football college story and yeah now this is the last shelf on my shelf and the last shelf i'm going to show you today lots of shelves in here but this is a little of a overview back here we have a collection of books i like and a collection of books i don't like that are all by the same author and that's why they're all back here so we have for example books by b celeste i for example loved underneath the sycamore tree and bawled my eyes out while reading it but then i only thought that these two books were okay we have the T.L. Swan books back here, Casanova, The Takeover, and The Stopover. I loved The Takeover, but I did not like The Stopover or The Casanova. So they're all back there because I love one of them, but I don't love the other books. And then in the back row, we have another one of the Dark Verse series by Ronix. She sent them to me. That is the last of my shelves. This is the end of my bookshelf tour. Yay! I hope this video was entertaining and informative at the same time, and I hope I showed everything that I have to show. Thank you all so much for watching this video. Uh, if you enjoyed it, you can give it a thumbs up, and if you want to see more of my content, you can subscribe. I hope you all have a great day, even nighttime, morning, whatever time you're in. I hope you're enjoying yourself. Go read a book! And you know what? I'm gonna give you three recommendations today, because why not? I showed you every book I own today. Recommendation one is Colorblind. It's a sapphic romance story in high school, and it's very good. Number two is The Chestnut Man, a very dark and scary thriller that I absolutely love. And number three is The Grimrose Girls. If you haven't read it, read it. Friend group, murder mystery story at a college, Dr. Redemia vibes, you will love it. You have to read this. Again, thank you so much for watching this video. Have a great day, happy reading, and see you next time.